Welcome back to E20 Zone TV. We are a five-star performance, and I've brought the boys on for the journey. To my right is Clivus. Down the bottom there is the American in the UK, Lucas. And we're here to discuss West Ham 5, 5, 5, Freiburg nil. Clive, how are you doing? And what did you think of that tonight, mate? Yeah, no, I'm doing good. Um, yeah, the performance was incredible. Um, I don't know if I've ever been to a game where we've dominated that much. So, yeah, it was unusual. Loved it. It was great. Great night. Great night. Lucas, using the Carpenters beforehand. Mm -hmm. talk, to me, talk to me. Um. Yeah, I was there. It was a good vibe. Uh, shout out to my mate Josh, who I met there. Great, great lad. Um. Yeah, it was a good build up, and um, I'm actually before we even start, I'm really happy with the support that uh, came to the ground today. There's they, there's reported going to be around like 11k empty seats. It, it looked it looked pretty packed out. Obviously, you could see some empty seats from where me and Clive were sitting, but I was very very happy and impressed with all the people that ended up turning up and. It wasn't quite severe at home, but it was a very good atmosphere, I must say. Yeah, fair and enough. It had, and it had to be. It had to be. Uh, fair enough. It, it, it was it was top from everyone tonight. I will say that. But let's get into this. Clive, I'll let you go first. Lucas Fabianski oh. didn't have a lot to do. What you yeah, I was going to say it's a bit difficult to uh, to judge him on that. Um, I'm just going to give him a 7 out of 10 because, I mean, clean sheet ultimately. Um, yeah. But... Uh, I'm sure he's had games where he's had to be tested a lot more than he was. So, mm. yeah, on that, a high seven. Yeah, I agree with you. High seven. Um, there was a chance in the first half where they went through, but it went wide. Other than that, you know, it is what it is. Second half, he just sat there, smoked a pipe, and just watched them kick ass, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, it is what it is. It's a high seven. Uh, Lucas, what you say? Yeah, I'll, I'll give him a, a standard seven. Um yeah, didn't have a lot to do, but when uh the ball get, when the ball got kicked back to him and he was under pressure a couple times, I thought he dealt with it well. So easy seven. Easy seven for you. We we'll move on to this man, Vladimir Soufal. Take it away, Clive. Soufal had a good performance. Um he had a couple of chances to get a goal, to be honest, tonight, which was quite funny. Um but <laughs> He had a crossbar, did he, at one stage? No, yeah, he, he, he had a very, very good game. Um, I liked his interlinking play on the right wing. Um, defensively, did pretty good. Um, I think his passing was relatively decent as well. So, I think on that on that basis, a eight, a low eight. Mm. I'll give him. Ooh, I'll give him a high seven, just not an eight for me. I thought he was all right. I thought he'd done his job. Um, he does frustrate me at times, but it is what it is. So I'll give him a high seven. I think the eights and nines and tens are going to have to be spread about tonight because there are so many. Uh, Lucas, what are you saying? Uh, for me, Sue found easy, a strong seven for me. I thought uh, he defended well. I thought he, I actually thought his passing in the final third was very decent. That one little bit of link-up play he had with Antonio in the second yeah. half was it was absolutely lovely. And, um, yeah, I just thought he was he was very good tonight. And he, he'd done what he had to do. So, a uh, strong seven for me. Strong seven all round. Where comes this man, Mavra Panos, Clive. Um, really enjoyed his pressing um, into the opposition's half, um, which he also did against Burnley the other day. Um, but I don't think he had a big involvement in the game, to be honest. So I think for me, just a standard seven. Mm. Bit pissed off with uh, Mavra Pals tonight. I had, him at, I had him at 12 to 1 to score any time and West Ham to win. The little <laughs> bastard just didn't do it for me tonight. Just didn't do it for me. But I agree with Clive. I'll give him a standard seven. I thought he was solid. He was he done his job tonight. Defended and allowed the attackers to attack. I think sometimes we allow our centre-halves and wing backs to try and attack all the time. It shouldn't be like that. But I'm going to be honest, seven out of 10, solid performance enough. And I agree with Keith, what Keith says there. Seven, uh, solid seven. Go on, Lucas, what are you saying? Um, yeah, Mavropan, it's not a lot to do tonight. Kind of the same with Fabianski. Not a lot to do, but when called upon, he was calm, made the right decisions. And um, he did break the line a few times, which is one of my favorite things to watch. I love seeing Mavropan on the ball just, 
break the line, just watching him run with the ball, kind of like Kudis. I just yeah. there's something about him running with the ball, past players. It's just like it, it's it's nice. But um, yeah, yeah, a solid seven for me today. He he solid, did what he had to do. Solid seven. We move on to this man, Zuma. What you saying, Clive? For someone that should be in his prime. He looks like he's on the verge of retirement. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan. I think any time he had to track back, Mavropanos kind of saved him with his with his pace. Um, so I think for me, it, it's a bog standard seven, but on the basis of a clean sheet. But I do think he's been heavily helped out by uh, his other centre back pairing. So yeah, I. I not too excited by Zuma, I must admit. Mm, we're going to rate him standard seven. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I think we're going to. I think we're going to uh, click tonight. Um, for me, standard seven. I thought he was good in moments, but yeah, again, it's the same thing with Mavropanos and with him. They defended, the others attacked, and it was as simple as that. So I make mine short and sweet. I give him a seven. Uh, Lucas, same as as Mavro for me. I'm going to give Zuma a solid seven. He just he done what he had to do, and yeah. just not a lot of work for him tonight. Yeah, I agree. Brian says a seven. Keith goes on and says a six. So it's mixed in it tonight with that. But we come to this man, the veteran, Aaron Cresswell. Redemption. You know what I mean, it had to be against the German side and all. Uh, Clive, take it away for him tonight. So, for me, um, we have to remember lack of game time he's 34 years old um and he's played on sunday he's played again tonight and he'll probably play again on sunday three games in seven days for a 34 year old who's hardly featured this season um he when people say a lack of game time you wouldn't think of it when it came to him um really really good performances his his corners excellent accurate amazing on point um the reason why we got our first goal and the reason for the for the corker that he scored, which is his first ever European oh, goal. Oh, mate, so what that a hit basis. that was as well. What a I'll hit. tell you what, I'll tell you what, this will make you laugh. The commentator said, that's his first European goal in 10 years or something. <laughs> he just scored a goal yeah. and he's just mugging him off. Yeah, what, so, you... I mean, for me, he gets a, a, a decent eight, a very decent eight. Yeah, yeah. Um, well done. Aaron Cresswell, I'm going to say that. Yeah. In the summer, he looked like he was down in tools and going on strike and everything else. And fair enough, he he got his head down, he come out and he, he's he been here. Yeah. And he'll probably leave at the end of the season. Um, That is a well done from me because I've obviously, uh, a few years ago in Frankfurt, in Frankfurt, when he got sent off, people sort of wanted to lynch him, me included. Yeah. But fair enough to him. He, tonight, he's... He, he played pretty well tonight. Like I agree with what you said, Clyde. The crosses, the defending, the goal. It all just aligned tonight, and he, he deserves it tonight. I'll give him that. So, yeah, 8 out of 10 for me. Uh, Lucas? Yeah, I'm I'm very, very happy for Cresswell because I know the last few seasons have been a bit – um. I really don't know how to describe with him. The last few seasons, it just really hasn't been great with Cresswell, is it, like – Everyone's yeah. been wanting him out, me included, because of so said moment you just mentioned. But I always try to remember Cresswell in his prime with us. He was such a good player. He was so good. Like, he's exactly what you want in a left back. And tonight, I'm not going to say it was a throwback because he wasn't bombing up and down the flank. But his corners were perfect. Absolutely perfect. They weren't good. They weren't great. His corners were perfect tonight. The hit he had for the goal was absolutely lovely. Me and Cl- me and Clive thought it got deflected, but hit it absolutely clean. Bang on. Great strike. And again, just like with other defenders, he'd done what he had to do. So a great night for Cresswell. A, a bit I'll of redemption. What, I'll tell you what, considering Emerson's alleged to be out for up to a month and considering the quarterfinals are literally the first leg is about three weeks away and the second leg is the fourth. Four four weeks away. I don't think we've got to worry too much as long as Cresswell stays fit. Yeah, I think yeah. I think we're all right. Yeah, I think he's. I think he, in one way, I think he wants to give it everything 
from now to the end of the season because I think he knows that that's it. Yeah. But um, he done he done well tonight. I'm going to give, I'm gonna give Cresswell a solid eight, and again, a bit of redemption for him. And I am happy for him because I do take away that moment that he had. I really do love Cresswell as a as a player. What he's mm. done for this club, he's been a good servant, and tonight he deserves his flowers. Deserves a round of applause. Played well. Fair play, mate. Fair play. This this man is next. And what better man do I come to than that man right there? Uh, Thomas Suchek, Clive, take it away. I am so gutted because that first goal was going to go in regardless of Paqueta <laughs> touching it or not. Because I saw the replay and I went, for fuck's sake, Paqueta, man, you stole his goal. Um yeah, look, Suchek, his is most recent performances the last few weeks have been incredible. Um, I don't think you can really complain with the effort he's putting in. Everything's going mm. good for him. Um, I'm going to give him a low eight because, I mean, that was really his goal. But I think his overall performance, demeanour, passing, everything is just its improving a lot. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I mean, the fact that he did the interview with Sky the other day, you don't see Zuma doing that, and Zuma's supposed to be the captain. So yeah. I think it's becoming a little bit more clear that if Moyes does continue um, into next season, then I think we would probably be anticipating a captaincy change because I think if Suchek is doing those sort of interviews, it suggests to me that he is being lined up for the captaincy. So, yeah, I think... I, I think he's showing leadership on and off the pitch. And yeah, he gets an eight from me. Mm. I thought he was excellent tonight. I'll go next. Eight out of ten. Um, I've knocked Suchek quite a lot over the years, but I'm not being funny. When West Ham have been in their worst moment, he has always stepped up. He's got some key goals this year. Key goals has won us games. And tonight he was everywhere. Like the assist for the goal to get us on our way. Two assists um, tonight. Yeah, two. And... Even him in that two like two man like sort of pivot with him and Alvarez was just yeah, he, he was just very, very good everywhere. I agree with what Clive's saying. Passing looks a bit better. Um he's his movements a lot better and he's tonight was more about the attackers, but I'm pleased for him tonight because he had a lot of stick. I've given him stick, other people have given him stick, and he's he's starting to sort of fire back at us, so to speak. So yeah, I'll give him an eight. Uh Lucas, what are you say? Yeah. I mean, let's put it straight. Suchek tonight, an absolute uh, Rolls Royce in the middle of the pitch today, in my opinion. He just, what he done today is exactly, if he could replicate that every single match, I would love mm. that. And I, and I do think the passing puts people off a lot with Suchek. Yeah. Because in my opinion, and obviously Clive will tell you as well as, as he loves Suchek. Like, if you take his awkward aesthetically unpleasing passing away to me he he actually does what he done tonight a lot defensively in my opinion so yeah but again tonight just immense absolutely immense and in, in the clock in, in the occasion we were in we needed that result so badly to continue on our journey and to make it three straight seasons to a core final um Suchek, Easy eight for me tonight. Just an absolute menace in the middle of the pitch. Fair enough, mate. We move on to this man, Edson Alvarez. Clive, what are you saying? Uh, again, solid performance. Uh, the one frustration I have is his simple lack of composure to not get a yellow card. We were 3-0 up. Yeah. Um, and obviously 3-1 on aggregate up. It's just unnecessary. And it's even more unnecessary when you look at the aspects of if he gets a yellow in the next game, then he's out of the second leg and, of the quarterfinals, and it was still I think. a bit too early to sub on. Yeah. Phillips. It's, mm. it's when, when you've got to consider that Phillips is still looking quite diabolical and we're <laughs> going to be facing even, even harder teams. Yeah. And on top of it, it's not even just a case of Phillips not being good. It's just, we don't have, enough players to be messing about and going oh let's yeah. go get yellow cards and get suspended for a game because it, yeah yeah it's it, he just needs to compose a little bit more and it's one of my biggest frustrations i think he's got the most yellow cards across the whole west ham team this season Easily. um 
And I'm very glad that there's no such thing as the FIFA Fair Play or UEFA Fair Play Award because Jesus, with with the amount of yellow cards he racks up, it would be bottom. Hundred <laughs> percent. What are you rating him, Clive? Uh, oh yeah, sorry, seven. Seven. <laughs> I'm gonna give. <laughs> I'm gonna give him an eight. Yeah, I thought he was excellent, all the way up to the yellow card. And I was in the pub earlier on watching the game, and as soon as he slid in, I literally shouted at the top of my voice, "You fucking idiot!" Yeah, because I knew the yellow card was coming. Yeah, someone walked in and went, fuck yeah, sorry about it. <laughs> it was funny, it was a moment. But I'm going to say this, he should never, he should never be sliding in there. Didn't have to at 3 new up. Like, really didn't. Like, but it was stupidity, really. But as a performance, he, he's superb. When he's in our team, we look a different team. Yeah, Calvin Phillips comes on. We'll talk about him later. Our first touch he has, he puts out for a throw-in to the, for the, to the opposition. So there you go. Uh, eight out of ten. Uh, solid, Lucas. Um, for me, again, I mean, you you both have said it all. I thought he was, I thought he was good tonight. Uh, the yellow card's a bit of a shame, but hopefully, hopefully we can get around that. But um, again, Edson Alvarez, he just he makes such a a big difference to us. I've said it for time yeah. now. I don't I don't think he's a world beater by any means. He's a he's a good player, but the influence and the impact he has in the role we ask him to play is yeah. just so important for us. And him and Suchek seem to be developing a little bit of a midfield partnership. Hopefully long may that continue. And um, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to give, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to give him an eight as well. He was very good. Eight, eight, eight and a seven. We move on to this man. Oh, yeah, what a player. Uh, Clive, take it away for West Ham United star boy. Yeah, star boy. Incredible passing accuracy tonight as per. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, Lucas said before the game, I don't like it when Kudus plays on the left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think it really matters when Kudus seems to be able to get the ball from his own half and just power it down the whole way, um, do yeah. some trickery. Only about 75 car. yards he took that ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it, he just, he provides a magical moment, doesn't he? And he just, uh, it's things like that that are going to make us not just remember the European uh, Cup matches that we've had, but also um, the moments like that are just, you know, they, they don't come around very often, especially for West Ham fans. So I think... He's had, yeah, he had an incredible game. That second goal was just incredible partnership between multiple players. Yeah. Um, the pass, Great the layup. Team. Great team the, goal that was. Yeah, and the, and the goalie would have had no chance because he would have seen it late because, I mean, Kudus basically got it underneath the defender's legs, basically megged him. So that yeah. second goal was incredible. I enjoyed the trickery in his own half when he managed to get the ball passed and sort of got the crowd starting to go, Oy. so I think... Yeah. Um, I think overall his just performance is charismatic. He's starting to get back to his form prior to AFCON as well, which is nice. So yeah. I think, you know, long may the form continue because this is the form we're going to need, um, not only for coming fixtures, but also for uh, for the next round of the Europa League, depending on who we get. So uh, for me, man of the match, and he gets a nine. Um. I said it a long time ago. I said, when you've got a player like Mohamed Kudus, you could have like another Dimitri Payet, not as in style of player, but as in impact. When this geezer is on it, he's lethal. He's unreal. He's unplayable at times. I thought first half, I thought he missed a key opportunity in the first half, yeah, to score. I thought, I hope it ain't one of them nights for him. Like, yeah. It really ain't. Yeah. Second half, he come out, he was like a machine. Just like a machine. He was just going through people. And everything, do you know what I'm saying? Um, I think the first goal is is world class. It's world class finish. If that's any, if that's uh, and any other player of any note, that's Haaland, De Bruyne, or an Arsenal player. I see back in the net podcast is in there. So shout out an Arsenal player. Like you know what I mean, then everyone's raving about it. I want to clip it up. We do it, and it ain't it ain't good enough. But Mo was superb tonight. Second half incredible. First half was a bit. Like that, I was like a bit worried about him. And even when Kane come on earlier on, he turned and said, oh, I'm with you, James. I was thinking the same, but he's getting a nine out of ten. Uh, he could have had a, he could have had a trick tonight easily. Nine out of ten. 
Lucas. I I absolutely love this guy. I love Mo so much. He he's just one of those players. To me, when when people talk about the West Ham way and like, oh, he's a West Ham player. Like Mo Kudis for me, mm-hmm. he is a West Ham player. He's everything I love about this club, and he reminds me of so many different players. Like he has he has the flair of Paqueta. He has the work rate of Jared Bowen. He has the finishing of Bowen as well. And I've told you for a long time now, the one thing I love about Bowen out on the wing is he's a tireless runner and his work rate is excellent. And Kudis, his goal, don't get me wrong, his goals were absolutely fantastic tonight. But defensively, I thought Mo Kudis was unbelievable tonight. Unbelievable. Wins the ball. It reminds me of Paqueta as well in that. That instance, he just wins the ball back the way he the way he wins that ball. I love him so much, and the goals they they speak for themselves. That second goal, if that's yeah. if that's Holland, if that's De Bruyne, talking about it for weeks. But oh, Mo Kudis, thank goodness, he is a West Ham player. He is going to get a. I'm giving him a ten. I thought he was absolutely perfect tonight. I love him so much. Thank God he is at West Ham. Fair enough. Mike Ferry. Shout out to Mike all the way over on the west side. Uh, Moy is in, he said. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not that tonight. It's all about fucking West Ham. You know, I can tell you that now. Do you know what I mean? But shout out to Mike. Right, let's move on to this man who got me on my way tonight. Um, Help me right out. Lucas Paqueta. Uh, good and bad tonight. I'm going to go first on this one. The good side of it, he scored the goal, got us on our way, and when he turns up and he's on it, we're staying kicking to gear. The bad side of it is when he comes off, sulks like a little kid. That's that's is the bad side of him, like the sort of childish nature of him. I wasn't impressed with that when he come off because we've got to look after this geezer. Yeah, if he's fit and he's on it, West Ham can like kick into gear. Yeah, when he's out of the team, we are, we're not we're not that good. So. I'm going to give him an eight tonight. I thought he was all right. I thought he was good, but I didn't like the way he come off. I will say that. I thought that was a bit, that lowered. Yeah, that weren't good for me. I, I won on that. Uh, eight out of 10. Uh, Clive. I guess a, I'm just trying to think there. He was, uh, yeah, at the subbing, I get it because from a competitor point of view, he doesn't want to, um, he obviously doesn't want to come off and whatnot, but he's not looking at the bigger picture. But, you know, I mean, off the pitch, I'm sure Moyes will sort that one out. So it's, yeah. it's a minor situation. Um, but overall, he looked pretty good, got a goal. Not his goal, technically. Um, but... I'm taking it, Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> Six to one win cast. I'm taking it, bro, 100%. The annoying thing is, if Suchek had scored that, it would have been his 10th goal of the season. So that's why I'm upset. Um, I'll get one on Sunday, don't worry. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, Suchek still scored more goals than Paquette this season across all competitions, so I'm happy. Um, Look, yeah, I think for me, he gets a high seven, I'm going to say. Maybe, actually, no, low eight, low eight, low eight. Low eight for you, yeah. Uh, Lucas, Lucas for Lucas. Yeah, goal, goal was good. Um, Again, he, he was just good tonight. Obviously, you never like to see him come off the pitch in that sort of way. But like Clive said, I think it's a bit minor. Nothing really for me to to keep in my head or really worry about. Because, um, again, with that with that type of situation, like it, his head is still like in the match. He wants to keep going. He's not looking at the bigger picture. But after the match, just like after any, any game, like you just kind of unwind and you kind of forget about it, and he'll be yeah. ready for Sunday. But, um, yeah, Lucas Paqueta, lovely player. Again, so happy he is a West Ham player. And um, I'm going to give him an 8. 8 out of 10 for Lucas from Lucas. Moving on to this man, Jared Bowen. Um, I'm going to go first tonight. This kid, man. Like, I remember years ago, when I, and I sat quite a lot on this channel, when he was at Hull and... I always thought if we could get hold of him, he'd be such a quality player for us. He bleeds Claret and Blue. If you want Mr. West Ham, he is Mr. West Ham. Right? 
He gives it everything for the shirt. Love him on the right tonight. I have many debates with people on YouTube and off YouTube, and people saying to me, James, he's not a striker. Uh, we need to get him on the right. I can understand it tonight because the whip of him, going down that side, causing chaos, making things happen. He is a quality player, this kid. Yeah. Um, I think the goal is excellent. That's, that's the goal that sort of got us in that safe zone to a point where yeah. if we concede, well, we're still in the game. Yeah. Great goal. Um, I think he goes on to beat Mikel Antonio's Premier League goal goals and everything. He's just a he's just a top lad. Yeah, he is a legend. I'm going to say this quite openly right now. This geezer is a legend of West Ham. Yeah, and he will go on to be a, a all time legend at West Ham. Prague, what he's doing now. If he goes and scores twenty goals this season in the Premier League, that's a fucking legend to me. He's a legend of this club. Jared Bowen gets a eight for me. Uh, Clive. Yeah, goal, assist. Um, great game from him again. I think slightly outshone by, by Kudis tonight. Um, Bowen still gets a nine, but he is slightly underneath Kudis on that, I think, tonight. Um, but yeah, great game again from him. Much better performance compared to his game on Sunday. I, I think Sunday he was a bit out of sorts. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, I think... All round good day for him. Called up to the England squad. One goal, one assist tonight. I think it's showing, you know, a little bit more maturity from him this time round because last time when he was on the cups of getting to a major tournament with England, he sort of lost his form and lost his composure. So I'm hoping this time round we don't see that. Yeah. Lucas. I'm going to give Jared Bowen a nine out of ten, just under my ten for Curtis, but uh. Like you said, Jared Bowen, what a lad, such a lad. He's such he's such a good player, and it was a bit of – it was a breath of fresh air tonight to see him out on the right because there are – you know me. I'm, I like to think I'm pretty pragmatic in the way I look at things. Sometimes I do like Jared Bowen up top. Sometimes I want to see him out on the wing, and tonight was one of those nights where he's out on the wing and he just – a breath of fresh air seeing him out yeah. there and he was he was so good tonight and we're gonna move we're gonna go to another player speaking of pragmatic i hope we see it on sunday but um mm. i what we saw tonight the team we saw tonight i wouldn't mind seeing that on sunday as well but um jared bone what a player nine out of ten nine out of ten for jb Moving on to this man, Mikel Antonio. And people, I've got to eat humble pie. I slated him. I don't know where Damien is, but Damien was in on me earlier. Um, I'm going to start on this one. I wish Mitch was he, here too. I know, right? <laughs> man of the match for me. Yeah. I know Kudus gets the applause for the goal and everything, and fair enough. Kudus is quality. But Mikel Antonio turned into the Mikel Antonio that we needed tonight. We needed a man to hold the ball up, pass the ball, Push us up the pitch. He was fucking flawless tonight. Flawless. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Freiburg had fatality. I've got Mortal Kombat on the brain, honestly. Um, he was just excellent, mate. He was just absolute excellent. And do you know what? I'm going to give him some credit tonight. He gets a lot of stick. I've given him a lot of stick. Will we see it again? I can't remember the last time he, he put in a performance like that for a fucking long time. But tonight... That was just perfection, really. It, the only thing that he didn't happen tonight for him is he didn't score. I think he deserved a goal for everything he'd done tonight. Yeah. Flawless. He's my man in the match. I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10. I think he gets a 10 out of 10 if he, if he scores the goal. Um, brilliant. Superb. Uh, Clive? Yeah, I'm one of his biggest critics. So, yeah, a bit annoying. But at the same time... Um, you know what he's 34 years old um and to be honest every time he seems to go through a benching situation he did this when skamaka was there he comes back and he seems to perform well so yeah, i'm beginning to wonder if it's sometimes good to have him benched and then have him have these good performances frustratingly yeah. obviously now we know that you know he's been performing well so he's probably going to be starting the next few so he, i hope he keeps the performances up is my he put out that tweet concern. as well just like against Sevilla. Yeah, yeah down, exactly. Not out. Exactly. So I think I think it's going to be an interesting one. I think he's had an incredible game tonight. Um, held up the ball very well. 
kept his strength up, didn't go down easily as well, which was nice because he knows yeah. he doesn't get these fouls. Um, and yeah, I mean, he, he really helped out with getting the goal tonight and he, he did deserve a goal. I think for me, he gets an eight out of 10. Um, and I think with Danny Ings seeming to have found some form, I think, you know, it, it, it might mean that, you know, Antonio knows he's got to keep on his toes because yeah. Yeah. Ings, Ings is surprisingly right. looking quite good. Yeah, I agree, mate. Lucas? Mate, what a throwback tonight was. Just, I don't even want to talk about his hold up, his link up, all that. Just what he done tonight is just such a throwback. Like his impact alone for me gets an eight, a strong eight alone. His impact, mm. you could feel it throughout throughout the ground. You could just feel him... Just he absolutely abused Freiburg tonight. Absolutely yeah. abused him. And then when you throw in to his, his hold up play was fantastic. His link he linked up great with everyone. And for me, that carries him into the nine category. Even though I know he didn't score, he didn't assist. He definitely deserved at least one of those tonight. But Mikhail Antonio. What a performance tonight. And we again really, really needed it. A few players tonight had to respond and, and step up in the occasion that we are in tonight. And I'm really hoping we can carry that into Sunday because, as we all know, mm. after Thursday going into Sunday, we do always look a bit stale, a little dull. But, yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping some of those players can carry what they did today into Sunday. And Antonio, hopefully one of them, 9 out of 10 for me. I thought he was yeah. superb. He was brilliant tonight. I will say that. Let's move on to the subs. Um, there's no point rating them, but obviously yeah, Ward, Ward he... Prowse probably because Ward Prowse was on for yeah. about twenty or twenty five thirty minutes, but the rest now. And, and Calvin Phillips first touch he has, he puts that for a throw in. I was like, <laughs> yeah, like, Phillips oh. still looks very nervous. Ings yeah. looked again on point for the few minutes he was on. Earthy didn't really get much of the ball, but he looked all right. Johnson yeah. looked okay for the time he was on. And then Ward Prowse, he had a really good pass from the left side down to the right side. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think we scored from it, which was a bit annoying. But it was it was great, great little work from him. I think Ward Prowse didn't look as negative as perhaps his last performance or his last couple of games, which was good. So at least it's someone we know we can rely on. Mm. So I think mean, if you're going to rate anyone, maybe Ward Prowse gets a high yeah. five, low six. But... Yeah. The rest, null and void. All of them. Good to see uh, the young uh, Earthy get on the pitch. I will say that before we sort of move on. Uh, and Johnson. And yeah, it's just, yeah, we, I mean, we're just going for the motions. Anything you want to add on that, Lucas, before we move on? Yeah, I mean, in terms of ratings, I probably give Ward Prowse a, a six. Uh, everyone else, null and void. Yeah. And it was nice to see George Earthy get on the pitch. Did have a nice little, nice little run up the pitch and then laid it off to Sue Fowl. But, um, yeah. yeah, fair enough, mate. We'll move on to this man, the ref. What do you make the ref, Clive? Not as bad as last week's, that's for sure. Um, I thought it was all right. Yeah, I think a few of the fouls early in, I did think were touch and go. But I, I, I will give the ref one thing: he didn't start carding early into the game or anything like yeah. that. Um, because there were probably a couple of challenges in the first half that you could argue were yellow cards. Um, but weren't given and it was more of a stern talking to and I think he let the game flow which is what I do appreciate from a referee um, so I think from a, especially from a UEFA referee standpoint I actually think he was actually half decent mm -hmm. um, on that I'm going to say a mediocre sort of like 5-6 for a ref I'm not going to give him much more he didn't really have anything major that he needed to deal with there was no like yeah. penalty calls or anything so bog standard performance nothing that you have to really like really judge on yeah, I'm gonna give him a seven. I thought he, I thought he was decent tonight. I thought like every foul he sort of got spot on. The Cresswell booking is right. The Alvarez booking is right. Yeah. Even though whether I, whether I like it or not, it's, it's still right. It's still he still got it bang on. Um, and yeah, he was he was steady, solid, and he knew he, he knew what he was doing. He wasn't like any other ref that we've had previous. So seven out of ten. Uh, Luke, Lucas, what are you saying? Yeah. Um... Definitely not as shit as what we've seen the past few weeks or months. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, the, uh, I don't disagree that the yellows were yellows. But to me, I think they were a tad bit soft. But then again, I'll take that performance over what we've seen 
the past yeah. month or so because normally it just ends in in tears and, and carnage and me wanting to shoot someone but um <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, the ref, the ref tonight was good, and you know me by my standards. I usually rate really, really low, but I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him a six tonight. I thought he was decent. Fair enough, mate. Six out of ten for Lucas. That's got to be yeah. a hot, yeah. one of the highest I've ever given. But I ain't gonna be six out of ten for that guy down there, David. Uh, yes. Boys, um, right. Yes, Okay. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Clive go first. Go on, Clive, take it away. Yeah. So I don't really want to make this hugely about Moyes, but I, the couple of times I logged into Twitter during the game, where I could, oh, um, with the Wi-Fi and whatnot, it's so frustrating to see that some fans were not celebrating the fact that we were winning this cup fixture and that we're about to get miserable, into yet miserable another gets. quarterfinal of a European competition. Something that, you know, I could only dream of us even qualifying for a European competition and actually getting to the group stage. So it's very frustrating and uh, this shouldn't really be about Moyes. But I mean, what more do you want from him at this point? I mean, this must be what one of our biggest victories that we've had at home, um, not only in Europe, but the whole time we've been at the London Stadium. it was, you know, it wasn't like Freiburg had anyone sent off. It was 11 v 11. Um, he took off the players at the right time, like Paqueta. Um, you know, let's also remember Paqueta came back from injury recently. So he, he did it for protection reasons too. Mm-hmm. I think the yeah. lineup was, the lineup was on point because ultimately, and I was saying this to Lucas, you know, all right, we're playing Zuma, but Agued had a bit of a mishap against Burnley. On top of that, Agued and Zuma combined are just awful. Um, so I think I think everything was on point from Moyes. And, you know, we, we didn't just settle when we took a 2-0 lead. It was we continued to look for more. We look settled as a team. Yeah. We look like we understand what we're trying to achieve. And, and... We hunted for that third goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. I love Keith Knight. I do. Yeah. Shout out to Keith Knight. I think he's in Harlow, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Moyes, nine out. Of, it gets a nine. Credit where it's due. He got his spot. See, but still Moyes out. But, I don't, but I, don't, I don't mind that, though. It yeah. was people, there was people on Twitter that were no. very much like, oh, well, this this isn't thanks to Moyes. This is just the players. Yeah. Or like, it was very critical, and it was all about Moyes. Even though we were winning the game at this point, like three or four nil, and I'm thinking to myself, "Be happy, your club is about to enter another European quarter final." Like, yeah. I couldn't even give a shit about Moyes at this point. What I'm caring right. about is I, my club. Yeah. My yeah. club is about to enter another 100%. quarter final. The European dream is not over. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. and on top of that, we've taken out a German team which means there's only three German teams across all European competitions. And I think six English teams remaining uh, across all competitions, I think, or no, five, sorry. Um, yeah. So the, it, it increases our chances of getting the UEFA coefficiency into second place, taking Germany out, which therefore yeah. means there'll be a fifth Champions League spot, which then means sixth and seventh gets Europa League, eighth will get the Conference League. Conference. On the, on the proviso that the FA Cup winner is Manchester City or Liverpool. So, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, this gives us a little bit of time to try and concentrate on league form. And any negativity towards any sort of thing is just hampering. Like, let's all just get together, like we did at the London Stadium tonight. The atmosphere was incredible. And just fucking back the man. He's the manager at the moment of the club that you allegedly support. So, fucking support the manager at this point. What are you <laughs> rating him before I land? Perfect from him, five star performance, so he gets a ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Um, I agree with everything what Clive says. It's all about West Ham United Football Club. Not about no players, not about no manager, not about what you want to see, your personal yeah. preference. Yeah. Do one. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah, you've got to give credit where credit's due. Right. I'm gonna use Keith as an example. He said Basically, he's happy with everything, but he still he still thinks Moyes should go. That's perfectly fine. But to keep using the negative to try and benefit your argument is fucking stupid. And, and Keith, and Keith is also someone who has a brain and doesn't root for his club to lose because he doesn't like the manager. Exactly. Listen, right, I don't ever want to see West Ham lose, but I'm a realist. West Ham do lose because sometimes West Ham are shit. Right? But tonight, flawless. 
flawless, superb, top class. Yeah, give him give him his flowers tonight, people. That's one thing I'm going to say. He went four two three one. We discussed it last night. I said attack is the order of the day, and West Ham need to attack this game from the front. Fucking did they attack it from the front? I didn't see a five nil coming. I'm not going to lie. But, that was a buffet uh, of attack. And I, and before I get to my rating, please don't say that Freiburg is shit and they were they weren't all that. Because the other way, they beat us and we were shit. Well, so, do you know what? Not not even that. I, I said this to Lucas. You can't really say Freiburg are crap because I think they're in the top eight of Bundesliga anyways. But let's just remember yeah. when we lost to Frankfurt, who ended up winning the Europa League, it was a bit yeah. like how we were in the Conference League. We won the Conference League, did shit in the league last season. That mm. uh, The season before, Frankfurt finished, I think, 14th in the, in the Bundesliga. I think but, so, yeah. But yeah. they won the Europa League. So sometimes your league form is fucked by European performances. Mm. And I think that's what happened to us last season. But yeah. it, on top of that, regardless of, of this situation, I think, you know, it, it doesn't really matter where your league position is. I mean, look at Karabag versus Bayern Leverkusen. Kar- True. Karabag have given Bayern Leverkusen not only an issue when they played at home, but they also brought it fully to Leverkusen tonight in Leverkusen. So you, you mm. can't play them on the league performance. You've got to play them on merit. If you're in the quarterfinal yeah. or the next round, sorry, of the Europa League, then you deserve to be there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, Moyes gets 10 out of 10 tonight. Took the shackles off. Attacked the game from the front. Made the subs at the right time. He's not Listen to Heitinger. For- Anyone who says he's at fault for Alvarez is yet a card. Please don't do drugs. Don't do drink. Don't do birds. Don't don't go to Amsterdam. That's what I'm going to say. Do right? Because I've seen that shit tonight and all. Yeah, with someone saying, oh, he should have brought Alvarez off sooner. All right? He didn't. Wow. It's, it's on Alvarez, for fuck's sake. Mm. Right? It's not on anyone else. It's on that twat for fucking sliding in. 10 out of 10. Superb. Um, I want to see it again. I do. Yeah. And he, he went bold tonight. Yeah. He had a choice to make tonight. You either attack from the front or you go down in the wind and he, he attacked from the front. And rightfully so. 10 out of 10. Give him his flowers. He deserves it. Lucas. Yeah, like Clive said, I'm not even going to make this uh, a Moise in, Moise out thing. But off merit in the match alone, 10 out of 10. He done absolutely nothing wrong. Subs and timing of the subs were perfect. Lineup was perfect. Tactics were perfect. And it resulted in a 5-0 defeat. And we've been begging to see goals. We got five of them tonight. When's the last time anyone can say they went to a West Ham match to see us score five? You know, we, we don't even have enough possession or shots to get back and score five, usually. Exactly. But, and, and well, there you go. Again, there's no more really needs to be said. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 for Mr. David Moyes. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for the player ratings. Before we go, lads, who would you like in the next round? Would you like Ooh. a glamour tire? Would you like I'm, to I'm, see... I'm, t- I'm sorry, I still uh, have PTSD from watching Karabag blow a 3-0 so lead. I, the, the one team I would like to know. avoid for obvious reasons is Liverpool. But re- regardless of, of that, yeah. I think there's there's two ways of looking at this, right? The likelihood of us getting an Italian team is very high. There's three Italian teams left, Roma, Atalanta, and Milan. From from a point of view of would I like to get us to a semi-final with the easiest route possible? Then for me, it would either be Marseille or Atalanta or Benfica. I think yeah. they would be the best three options. From an amazing away day perspective, then I would like us to get either Roma Benfica, again, would be a great option for an away day. I've been to their stadium. It's incredible. Um, and then Milan would be another good uh, a good away day as well to go to the San Siro. That would be beautiful. Um, I think it would be quite you, funny. Or so you don't fancy ironic. Liverpool away, Clive. You don't fancy Liverpool. <laughs> well, the whole point of this European competition is to get some European teams, right? So I'll tell you what. It, I'm I, gonna I say would this. like one of those. Him, him down there fucking hates it. <laughs> yeah, he does. Do not take me back to Germany for yeah. fuck's sake, please. Well, well the, the, the one, go one fucking thing mad. I would say, the one thing go I would on. say is, even though Leverkusen are having an incredible time in the Bundesliga, their form in Europe shows that they are struggling a bit. So, yeah, I'm not too scared about Leverkusen. I, I'm more concerned about facing Liverpool, not only because it's Liverpool, but 
uh, or like you know the lack of great away day there um but it's more because liverpool i think in my opinion are probably slam duck favorites to win this tournament yeah. um and i would like to avoid them as long as we could if potentially liverpool could get milan then that would be great i think roma would be a very hard tie they had an upturn of events again that's another good away day there um so yeah i'll take anyone at this point you know all teams are, are there on merit but mm. I, I would like a, i'd like a team like benfica it'd be funny if we get atalanta because skamaka's there Skimaka. Skimaka did, did score tonight as well so you know there, there are some ironies around there um but you know i think it'd be nice to get an italian team we'll go with that mm. before we wrap up give me a team lucas that you think <sighs> we get it's tough because I'm, I'm always in two minds of mm. how far do I want to go or how great of a day out do I want. And in terms you're of right, you're only going to be, you're only going to be here for the next round. So yeah. In, ter- in terms of competition, I really do think I would, I would love for us to, to draw Marseille or Atalanta, some or Benfica. Those would be ideal. Um, I really do want to avoid uh, Liverpool one because we probably will lose them and two the coefficient yeah. coefficiency will get messed up a little bit because one of us will yeah. go out but um mate I'm I'm up for anyone I I we've I've said it a million times I said it to Clive tonight I've said it to you a million times our starting eleven I'll go to war with them against anyone in the world bar a few clubs obviously but yeah I bring bring on anyone bring on anyone. Think- I think the one thing I would say about Liverpool is in a month's time when it comes to April, what mid April, you're looking at about five, six fixtures left in the Premier League. And the yeah. one thing I would say is they might be looking at what's yeah. more important, the Premier League, which would be Klopp's final hurrah. Yeah. Or the Europa League. And the Europa League's not Champions League. So and, and you've also got FA Cup in there and all. Well, yeah. All, I, all I know is I want to go ferry to Azerbaijan, and they totally fucked it for yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, I would have loved to have gone to um, to Azerbaijan, but there you have it. So, yeah, no, I, 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 I think we'll see. But no, Azerbaijan for us. I will say no, that. Can't be worse I, I, than I, I, Germany. I think, Shithole. No, true. But I think Liverpool could be an interesting one for any team that does get them, depending on their Premier League situation um, in yeah. a few weeks' time. And no, and no Roma, please. I cannot deal with Romelu Lukaku, PTSD. I don't want to see him score against us ever again. Ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that. true. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I think West Ham get um, Atlanta. I don't know why. I've got a feeling. I think Skamaka comes back and then... Yeah. You know, that, 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 would actually, that would actually be a corker of a tie. Yeah. An and, that, those, and that's the sort of tie West Ham needs. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think... I think that would be a good matchup for for West Ham to have, but good away day. I mean, in good matches. Yeah, exactly. And lovely I think Atlanta. Got... Lovely part of Italy. I'm going to say that. <laughs> you know I, mean, Atlanta. I actually you... don't know where Atalanta is, to be honest. Oh, it's, gotta, I think gotta it's be like... better than Freiburg, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be pretty nice in there. I will say oh, that. I don't know my... yeah, it's like Lombardy, of course. It's north North Italy, so yeah, it's supposed to be quite nice. But um, yeah, I mean. They're, they're doing all right in the league. They're, they're still looking at getting in Europe for next season in Serie A. I think they're in like sixth. So. Gav, dog, a massive performance tonight. Evening all. Shout out to them, mate. Him. Uh, right, I'm going to wrap it up there, gentlemen. Clive, bit of pleasure, mate. Glad you're doing well. Thank you for, for coming on. I really do appreciate it, mate. Uh, and Lucas, you're the lucky charm, brother. <laughs> you come That's over right. here with... We we do all right. Do you know what I mean? I think the only loss we've had so far is in a different country. So, you know, it does help. And you but... know what? I'll accept that because fuck Germany. Fuck that place. <laughs> well, I mean, we shouldn't even lost. We shouldn't have lost. We should have got a draw because we should have got a penalty. Assuming listen, we would have scored that penalty. Listen, right. Let's uh, go off, fund me off page. Vibes. Off vibes. We're undefeated. I know. Go fund me page for Lucas. Right. Keep him here to the end of the season and Dublin. That'd be fun. Um, smash a like on the video, subscribe to each one his own TV, hit notification bell and all that. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday. Uh, I'm going to try and get, I oh, know, tell a lie, we're back tomorrow. Uh, the draw, let's see who we get. <laughs> That's going to be fun. I swear oh, to God, if we get Liverpool, mate, 
Yeah, I mean, I will just probably smash up my house. As, as I say, as I say, anything could happen. Ball. Yeah, but as I say, anything anything could happen depending on the Premier League because I think they will prioritise the Premier League over yeah. um, over the Europa League. And that's no disrespect to the Europa League. I think it's more that, you know, they've only had one Premier League title in, in 30 right. years or whatever it is. And I think they could... Um, you know, I think they'll see that as a bigger send off yeah. for Klopp. I just, yeah. I just want a European night, and let me tell you, Liverpool, mm, the farthest thing away, the farthest thing from Europe you'll ever see in your life. So, fuck that. <laughs> I don't want to go to that shithole. Actually, you to just, be fair, I'd rather go to Liverpool than Freiburg ever again. But you just fuck. know, right? You could have Rome, Benfica. Milan, and we get to go to the Arkles <laughs> again, Great. and then you end up in Liverpool. It is just on the cards. Um, we, listen, would, we, wouldn't, we would we wouldn't we wouldn't end up in the Arkles because the Arkles <laughs> is for the um uh, for Liverpool supporters. No, it's I'm because... a fucking Barcelona. Oh, <laughs> I know. Right, that's enough from us. Uh, enjoy your Thursday night. Enjoy this five nil win. Whether you're Moyes in, Moyes out, we're Claret and Blue forever. Yeah, and West Ham United will live on forever before any sort of manager, players, etc. Um. And I will see you again tomorrow. Uh, come on, let's get a nice draw. Possible semi-final, mate, is inbound if we get a nice draw. Ah, West Ham United. What did I say, lads? Do you know what I'm saying? 5-0 is what it is. Five-star performance. A bush.